Oh yeah, like the age of Aquarius on a chilly day, we're gonna let the sun shine in here. Hello and welcome everybody. Josh the RV Nerd here at Vicious RV, well, at Salem Wildwood's uh, third of three FSX plants, getting you some updated footage on the 178. Today shown in the, um, you know, fancy pants, shiny shoes, platinum package with fiberglass skin upgrade here, and a nice little hard shell propane tank cover, which is nice to go with that. Normally this would be a tin skin exterior unit, um, available both in the uh, Salem blue and the Wildwood caramel kind of accent colored uh, patterns. This is what happens when you're like, I need to sleep as many people as possible in as small of a camper possible. You've got a, uh, uh, they call it basically like a Murphy bed up front that can fold down for your, maybe call it your primary sleeping. You've got a U dinette that can fold down, then two double over double bunks, which means this could sleep anywhere from like five to potentially eight people, depending how you pack them, rack them, and stack them, and how big or small they are, before you even start throwing, uh, you know, like an air mattress on the floor or something like that. So where this could actually, I've seen some people say, listen, this works great. Um, we, we, we take a, like a, a bigger family camping, but we tend to throw a tent outside. But if it is a rainy day, a rainy night, we can bring everybody indoors. Um, the u slide really opens up the living space in this. And between the u and the Murphy bed, it effectively kind of has the space and seating of a super slide without anywhere near the length, weight, and cost of a super slide. Now I'm gonna have to get up close and personal with this thing behind me here because there's a truck coming beside me that I don't feel like getting run over because I'm literally right in their main driveway. They were kind enough to pull these up for me today though. This is a cool camper, it does a lot of things. It's got a neat little kind of very simple basic but effective and to the point mini camp kitchenette and enclosed protected underbelly we're ladder prepped now to get up to that fully walkable roof we're looking at one today with their optional solar package this pretty much has all of the things that could possibly be done on it done right here but i've yet to see an rv that's perfect it's not the most over the top amazing like i'll volunteer this it has very very limited storage for like clothes you're gonna be living out of duffel bags in this thing and I wanna give you that kind of good information because before you go spending that hard earned money, I want you to know you're getting the right RV and that's the kind of info we wanna bring with you here from Bish's RV. Let's get in there and see what she, uh, what she does and what she doesn't do. And like any RV, this camper has some really good qualities. It's got a couple things to make you go, hmm. So what are we looking at? Well, over here in the, it's a, a nice full deep slide, which gives it a like full big u dinette. What's interesting though, you're going to see in a few minutes, there is some storage underneath of it. What I like about that is when I'm sitting like a bench or a booth or even in my office chair, I curl my legs under me, which doesn't help my very poor circulation by any means. My legs end up hurting by the end of the day. The lack of water that I also don't drink doesn't help. But you might notice the pedestal bases. Normally, I'm not a big fan of those. But because that slide goes over the wheel well, which is what that little wooden box is back there, so the slide actually has to be above the floor a little bit. So you need a, a tiny bit of a step-up slide. I prefer a, a post dinette here because that way the dinette can't be, the, the table can't be pushed off the edge of the slide. Uh, that's a thing I could really see happening. If I'm being nitpicky, I would not complain about one light in the slide ceiling, but obviously I'm complaining about there not being one light in there. <laughs> one thing that is kind of neat here, uh, you've got this uh, vent fan here in the, uh, the kitchen and living area, and it's a simple fan. You'll see the same uh, smaller fan uh, used back in the bathroom. But what is kind of nice is, you know, you feel like upgrading those. If if you're going to be boondocking a lot and you need airflow without running that air conditioner, that's uh, a, a very inexpensive way of accomplishing that goal. And Hangs Vortex fans, H-E-N-G-S. Uh, that is my personal go-to. I'm not sponsored by, I don't do sponsored content. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, and a lot of what I share is just my opinion. But uh, it, it is free of clouded bias. Like, I'm not paid by anybody but bishes. That's just the, the, the only people I work for. It's kind of like, you know, PBS. And viewers like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a basic small kitchenette. Um, they went with the circular sink here. Uh, would you prefer circular sink, rectangle, single basin sink, like a big one, or a giant farm sink? A lot of people like the big farm sink, but it does mean that you have absolutely zero countertop space. Um, a a flip-up countertop extension also might be 
a, a, a very high function, very low dollar add-on that you could uh, apply here and kind of uh, enjoy the experience. Now, I'm, uh, you haven't, well, I guess you've seen it in the floor plan of Flash. We're going to flip around in a minute. Uh, sitting at the Murphy sofa, if you choose to add a uh, TV on that wall over there, you've got the perfect spot for it. Um, and that's another thing. Remember, you know, this is a small camper. Maximum weight of this is 4,800 pounds with the effective seating and living space of like a bigger Super Slide RV. I am not calling it equivalent by any means, so keep that in mind. Now, if you look really closely, uh, first of all, I, I like how there's all these windows in here and they do all open for airflow. Every one of these, which is really nice. The window curtains are just kind of blocking it off. You've got USB plugs in the top and bottom bunks. You've got individual curtains for the top and bottom bunks. And if you notice, they are using a, a, a pretty hefty fabric. So you can actually have some decent privacy in there. What you're going to want to be aware of is this RV does not have central air, which is actually a problem very few people talk about about lower bunks anyway. Lower bunks usually don't get a lot of airflow. But this is just a, it's called a direct dump AC, which is a, a very flowery name. Anytime you hear the word dump in something, it just really sparks to like those, those feelings of quality and confidence. Am I right? Anyway, but that's the name of it. Unless that curtain's open, you're not really getting a lot of airflow up here. So the kids could be hot boxing themselves. So don't feed them too many baked beans the night before you put them down. But if you draw your attention to the rear wall, you're going to see how the rear wall suddenly got a lot closer to us. That's because there's stuff back there. And I think it would be really cool. Like, I don't know what, it's probably some kind of plumbing. I'm not exactly sure. I think it would be really cool if this had that kind of flip up cargo bunk with a rear door. But because there's some kind of stuff back there, it just physically can't be done, doesn't fit. I do like the lighter color palette that we have in here overall. Um, and it's, you know, it's lighter without being like farmhouse. It's just a light, natural wood tone. And for me, it really works. Now, I'm going to sit over here at the dinette for a second if I can get my fat butt around the uh, dining table. What butt? That's, that's kind of a joke. Like, I, I don't, I try not to flash my backside on the camera too awful much, but I was not blessed with a big old muscle booty. Of course, um, you know, being a person who rides an office chair all day and I don't exactly do my squats, I'm not really building those gluteus muscles, as it were. I, I don't even, why are we talking about this? Anyway, I, I sat at the dinette so you could see the campsite windows. There's some, it's not great. Now, up front here, let's, uh, you know, kind of dive into this just a little bit. You've got, uh, they, they've changed this around the last couple of years, and I think this is their best arrangement so far. Last year, it was basically just like a bench with a cushion that flopped down. That is now a jackknife sofa, and uh, it is far more supporting to sleep on, basically. And I like the dual side stands. Um, actually, if you look at this, they, they've really changed around uh, the front end of this quite a bit from years past. Um, as compared to what they used to call their jiffy bed system, it's far more symmetrical looking. Now you've got kind of a mine and yours closet situation going on. This is one of the reasons I want to put this on camera. This is a super popular model that they continue to improve and upgrade uh, a little bit. Both sides of the bed have some household outlets. You've got USBs over here, United States Bs plugs, although you don't have any on the, uh, the poop side of the RV. You've also got your solar charge controller here if you get one that does have the optional solar package. Now, full window in the door, neat. No shade or even shade prep for the door. Not as neat. <laughs> and again, just trying to shoot you straight on all this stuff here. Um, let's dive into some deeper details, starting with, uh, let's crack open... The, uh, the dual swinging door refrigerator, if you start noticing, uh, first of all, it's a 10 plus cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge, very deep, tons of cold storage, but those doors flip both directions, which is cool. Now there's some, there's a deep, deep shelf under the sink, but it doesn't go all the way to the floor because there's like your furnace and stuff and water heater under there. So they, they didn't give us space for a wastebasket. Maybe you'd stuff that under the bunks. I don't know. They gave us at least one drawer and I love that portable Bluetooth speaker, but uh, the bed system on this. This is uh, a, 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 in the family of Murphy beds. It's what I refer to as a bendy bed. It's actually a trifold. Well, it's a bifold mattress. There's 
two fold so there's three sections uh, as is that considered a bifold or a trifold i don't know anyway it's a 60 by 74 camp queen size and what that means is a little bit over six foot tall you notice when i first laid down i, I really didn't quite fit i had to adjust uh it, i i basically exactly fit on this mattress but if i put a pillow in my head and slid away from the headboard a little bit my toes would probably dip off the end of the bed i do like the tote storage they have going on under that mattress right there that is, I think, a very cool thing. But what's also cool, you don't have to have those totes there. You could slide them out and use them like a footrest if you want to. Throw a pillow on it, something like that. Um, you, maybe you'd throw a dog kennel down there. You saw how I could play hide and seek down under that thing. Um, I'm kind of wondering, you know, what would you pack down in that little space right there? And uh, again, back over here at the Udinet, you can see there is full, like, door access to the easy full storage below both of those side benches right there. But again, it doesn't have a lot of normal, traditional clothing storage. That's one of the reasons I think the update on that front Murphy bed is so, so important. Now, technically, this has a little bit of a peekaboo, I smell you door with a little gap action at the top here. But it's not, like, super big. Like, I've seen some campers where there's, like, a 9-inch gap up top, and that feels weird. You know, you feel like somebody's going to put their phone on a selfie stick, and they're going to spy on me, first of all. I hope nobody wants to see that. But secondly, um, at least now I'm in the bathroom. I don't know. Anyway, um, never mind all that. Uh, toilet space. Because there's some kind of plumbing running under that little wooden thing right there, it gave me, like, I couldn't decide to put my feet on the floor, to put my feet up on that thing like it's a miniature squatty potty. <laughs> Sealed edge thermal foil counters all the way through. Um, and it is a full medicine cabinet on the wall. It's not angle mounted, but frankly, I'll take a medicine cabinet flat mounted instead of angled over just a mirror mirror on the wall any given day of the week. Um, the side walls are six and a half foot tall also. So what that means is my head is in the combination skylight vent fan in the shower, but it's sufficient. It's good enough, I think, for a small camper like this, but that's just my two cents there and you may notice they're doing full shower surround paneling it's one of the differences between an fsx and its little brother the le series um and just a simple shower pan down there not a big uh step up it's got one of those kind of retractable um shower door things i generally do fine with those occasionally i'll bump one with my elbow and scare the life out of myself as it like shuts real fast but uh yeah neither here nor there how about road mode and when we close the slide up, it gets awful tight in here awful quick. And that's what happens when you try to jam like 23 foot of trailer into a, uh, you know, 17 foot box. Now, uh, one of, I guess, the uh, potential hiccups, downsides, whatever, losses, points to consider, whatever you want to call it. You're not able to fold that sofa down with the slide closed. So this one does not have uh, cracker barrel compliant road mode travel access. Beyond that, though, you can actually very easily walk through here. You can stop. You can get to the kitchen. You can get to all of the kitchen, the fridge, the everything, the bunks in the back. So depending on how many of you there are, you may be able to use the bunks as like a, uh, a stopover sleepover, but that may not be your idea of camping. I get that. And thankfully, the bathroom door does clear the slide fascias. So if you do need to get in here for a quick little mom, dad, I got a potty stop. Well, you're going to be able to do that. Now, once again, you don't need a big giant tow vehicle to handle one of these. If you have your daily drive an SUV, it may be sufficient here. The thing you're gonna watch out, uh, the, the two main factors to keep an eye out on this one is going to be its GVW fully max loaded weight and its hitch weight. Um, typically though, if you've got say like a, a 55 to 6,000 pound tow capacity, most vehicles with a proper weight distribution hitch system will find that a uh, sufficient pairing for this camper right here. Now they uh, did a nice job putting the biggest awning on it they could. Um, if you remember recently, I put a video out on the LE series of these. This is like, you know, still small, still single axle, but like when you start to get a little more flashy, fancy, and a little bit more fun, naturally you're heavier and you're more expensive also as a result. So it's all kind of relative. They do, it's not a full on camp kitchen. I'm gonna call it a little camp cooking and convenience center but it's actually pretty effective. And there's a lot of people that say, yeah, but can I get it without the camp kitchen and just have storage? With the way that they tuck that refrigerator back in the corner, 
Um, I think they're using the space uh, better than they ever did because uh, if the fridge door was shut, you'd see that you actually have a nice chunk of space there. And if you don't care about the griddle, if you don't care about the fridge, it's only a couple little screw brackets uh, securing it to the flooring right there. It would not be difficult to uh, remove. Now, um, the Salem series that we're looking at here will always have some kind of silver with blue accent exterior skin package. The uh, Wildwood sister clone to this uh, dresses herself up a little bit differently. In Platinum Edition, it'll still have silver exterior with a little kind of um, caramel orange sort of accent. But in the base stick and uh, tin skin version, it's always a stick built structure, mind you, but in the tin skin version, you will have a uh, like orangey bronze kind of accent. So, you know, sort of keep those things there in mind. We got a tractor screaming through behind us. Apologies for the background noise. Doing the best I can to try to minimize that, but they were kind enough to put me up in their space. I'm not going to complain about them, uh, you know, working um, when I'm in their area. <laughs> Uh, I also just about tripped on a uh, crack in the asphalt right there, but thankfully I didn't end up cracking my asphalt. <laughs> I said asphalt, HR can't come after me. <laughs> anyway, we're seven and a half foot wide, which also helps the towability aspects of this. It's not too awful big. In the platinum package, you get this nice hard shell uh, propane cover. In the standard series that won't be there just there's no propane cover you know if you want to get one of those from a part shop it's not a hard thing to do and i love these little guys these little plug buddies basically it just keeps your your safety chain hooks it keeps your seven way plug just up out of the dirt you know with the optional solar package you're actually getting a, a basic but a factory supplied battery and box normally it has none and the disconnect will always be there no matter what you may have noticed how it does have a, a full pass-through uh, compartment. Um, it is kind of a little bit of a dog leg left cutaway, but uh, at the same time, it I mean, it's, it's better than nothing. You notice another major update versus the previous seasons on these, though. No more Schwintec slide. They've gone to a Norco cable slide system uh, because it is also a very light system. It works very well on these smaller straight in and out slides like this, but uh, word on the street is better service records. So I'm glad to see that right there myself. Now, uh, a, something here that's kind of boring to talk about, but a really nice feature is the black tank flush system. You know, that is handy. Now this doesn't have massive holding tank capacities. This does not have super high ground clearance. It's not intended to be some kind of sweet off-grid warrior level camper or anything like that. It's just a basic camper. Now you might do some of that kind of function with it, but it's not intended, you know, it's, it's not a rock crawler through the Mojave Desert or the Mojave as my grandfather used to call it you try to correct him he's like it's mojave and i'm like oh okay okay grandpa don't yell um <laughs> time to time to take your pills grandpa notice how the windows are tinted and it does have a uh, amount for a factory uh well not a factory but a, a telescopic removable floating ladder and giving you a look up there at the walkable roof uh kind of like we did in our little floor plan in a flash uh, intro footage, you see up there the optional 200 watt solar panel. Now that is paired with a 30 amp controller. Uh, so, you know, theoretically, if you wanted to, there's still some available real estate up there. You could probably expand the solar on this a little bit, uh, depending on what you felt like doing with it. Like if you just want to run a lot of lights and fans the whole time, or something people don't realize, how much juice the furnace eats. And I think it's because like we think, well, furnace, that's a, that's a propane device. It must not use a lot of juice. The, the blower fan on that sucker really taxes your battery. So, it, you know, the, you, could, you could put all kinds of solar panels on this, but like it doesn't have any sort of inverter package. It's not gonna run the air conditioner off grid. But if you're like, okay, I'm gonna spring and fall camp. I need that furnace to run. You may want to add a second battery. You may want to get a portable solar panel to bring along with you or something like that. Something extra to help recharge your batteries during the day because at night, that furnace could suck that sucker dry. And I hope you appreciate that kind of extra detail information. One other thing, it's a safety point of concern for, uh, for your family, for your kids. You have two hot exhaust systems off this side of the RV because the other side of the RV is a bathroom, a slide, and a bed. There's no physical space on the other side of the RV to put it. Kind of a bummer. But you've got your furnace, 
which if you're spring and fall camping, you're probably spending less time outside under the patio, less of an issue for me. But the water heater, all summer, sorry, I'm in reverse view mode. I'm not, I would never be a good weather person. All the respect in the world, I'm doing everything backwards on a green screen. That is not easy. Um, anyway, water heater exhaust will spring, summer, fall, whatever. We'll be pumping hot air onto your campsite and have a hot scald your fingers surface. So make sure, especially if you got littles, you teach them that's hot, don't touch it. Now, instead of smoke and mirrors and trying to tell you that one's better than the other and they're not the same, I, I, I try to just be fair and transparent. That's a Salem. We're about to peek at a, a color package of a Wildwood over here, albeit a different floor plan. But I want you to know they are the exact same thing made by the same people in the same facility right over here. Uh, one is not better than the other. Some of our stores carry Salem. Some of our stores carry Wildwood. It's the same way either way. And I suppose if it really comes down to it, you can just choose the one that has the color palette that suits you or maybe for whatever reason, even though they're the same RV, we have a different or better price on one or the other. I don't know, but it gives you the chance to, to be a little more, well, picky. Because <laughs> that's a lot of money that you're looking at spending and we want to make sure you're doing it the right way. That's why we put these videos together. I'll leave you a link in the video description to check for pricing and availability on either the Salem or the Wildwood versions. Uh, one link will rule them all, like the Lord of the Rings, basically. And when you're ready, we will be ready. And until then, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.